Good morning and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am your host, Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, it is always an honor and a pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And, and so we invite you to join in the uh, television ministry uh, Mondays and Fridays, 1130 a.m. And we are going to start coming to you live during the week via our Facebook page while we are pre-recording. And so you will receive the Facebook live recording. And then at 10, uh, 10.30 a.m. you will receive uh, uh, television ministry via our YouTube channel. And so we're balancing those things out. You can also tune in with us via radio ministry, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, uh, 12.30 p.m. Our station is Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson via Spryker Radio. You can also tune in via iHeartRadio, iTunes, our YouTube channel, which is The Balance of Life with Angel Ferguson, uh, internet television, Vilout.com. Just check out their TV guide. Subscribe to our channel, The Balance of Life. We'd also love to invite you to Partners in Prayer every Tuesday night, 6 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m., and we will provide you with details for Partners in Prayer, where we uh, lift up the body of Christ as a whole until the ends of the earth, and so we'd love to stay connected with you. Before I go into our word for today, which is your faith requires action, I'd like to extend an invitation to you. If you are in the Palmetto, Florida area this Sunday, July the 28th, please join me as I will uh, be a part of their ministry for the day to give the word of God. The name of the church is Genuine Hope Ministries. The pastor is Pastor Marvina Johnson. The address is 651 17th Street West, Unit J, Palmetto, Florida, 34221. The services begin at 9 o'clock a.m. And so I greatly appreciate them for extending an invitation to me to come and minister the Word of God on this Sunday. Our word for today is, your faith requires action. Faith is, is, is just faith if we do not put any action behind it. And so we are reminded in the word of God of some very, very important principles connected to faith. And so we can have faith, but if we do not put anything behind that faith, it's just mere words. And so we'd like to take our time and teach this. And so it, it, more than likely, as God allows us to, uh, we will continue this word and, and, and just share it as God gives it to us. And so as you have your visions, I'm talking to our visionaries today. I'm talking to those who, who have a, a seed in your belly and, and, and you don't know what to do that seed has been in your belly, that vision has been in your belly, that word has been in your belly, and, and you've just left it there because you don't know what to do with it. And so faith, of course, comes by hearing, and not just by hearing, but by doing. And so uh, we're, we're going to look at some very important things here, and I, I'd like to take my time because I want that vision to come forth in you. And so even if we look at the principles of the secular world, the secular world has taken the things of Christ and used it for their purpose. And so even when you, you they, they go on principles of faith. And so if you go to the bank, when you go to buy that house, when you go to buy that car, whatever you go to buy and you do the application and they run your credit, what do they say? When they approve you, they say, in good faith. In good faith, you are approved, my God. In good faith, you are approved because we have checked your credit score. We have checked your references. And so in good faith, you have been approved. Another thing that they have adopted is on the money. They say, in God, we trust. And so in God, we trust. The secular world is using it. 
you who believe in Christ, you who have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's that's your standing, that's your faith. In God, do you trust? And so I have to ask you this very, very important question. If God gave you a word, if God gave you a vision, if God put something in your belly and he said in due time it shall come forth, my dear, why are you second guessing what he gave you? What's the holdup? What's the hindrance? By faith, in faith, in good faith, he put that seed in your belly. In God you trust. But you've taken your trust and you've put your trust in man because you refuse to move forward because someone won't come along and help you. Those who you thought should help you, is they're not helping you, and so you've decided to sit back. And you're saying, it's not my time. But in God we trust, or so we say. God is waiting on us. He gave us some things in the word to reaffirm. He knew us from the beginning. He has great thoughts for us. And he even goes for as to say, the word in which I send it out shall, re shall not return unto me void. And so let's go over to, let's look at these three things. And then we're going to go back to uh, St. Matthew's, the 17th chapter, because we're going to break down faith. Faith requires your action. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Faith requires an action. He tells Jeremiah in the first chapter, he says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. He's saying that before you were even created, before you were even conceived, I knew you. I knew the things that I had planned for your life. And so with these things that I have planned for your life, he's saying, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Your faith requires action. I am waiting on you. God is waiting on you. And this word today is going to, to those you are sitting on something that God put in your spirit. You are sitting, you're, you're visionaries. God has given it to you. You've seen it time and time again. Every time you turn around, you see that thing that God has placed in your belly. But you're second guessing God. The secular world doesn't second guess God. They, they put it on their, on their money. Look at your money. Pour your money out. What does it say? In God we trust. When you get ready to go for that loan, like I said earlier, when they review your application and they approve you, they say in good faith. And so I have to, I have to ask you this question, what are you doing with your faith? Are you activating your faith? Or are you just sitting on your faith? In good faith. Hmm. Which means in good faith, in the secular world, you were given some things, uh, uh, some tangible things, and you were a good steward over those things. And so because in good faith, I saw, oh my God, I saw where you were a good steward over these things. And so I'm going to give you a little bit more. I'm going to add to what you have. Why? Because you were a good steward over the things that you had previously. You did not abuse those things. You took care of those things. And so I saw that you were a good steward. And so now that I see that you were a good steward, I can advance you more. I can approve this. And so God is saying unto us today, I saw that you were a good steward. 
And now I can give you this in good faith. More proof that God is waiting on us. Isaiah 55. He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Here's a key. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. And so that ministry, that, that word to, to, to minister, that vision of, of business, of, of a home, of, of family members being delivered, souls being saved, healing in the body, spiritually and naturally. He says here, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. He has given the word. He has spoken the word. He's waiting on us to activate that faith. How will the individual hear the word of salvation, of deliverance, of healing, unless we speak that which he put in us to give them? If he gave you a word to minister to someone, whether it is healing, spiritually or naturally, encouragement concerning their vision, uh, whatever God gave you to give to a person, whether it's to an individual, to a ministry, to a nation, if you hold that word, how will they hear it? He gave you the word. You're the mouthpiece. My God, you're the tool. You're the ministry tool, but you're holding it. He says, so shall my word be, be that goeth forth out of my mouth. And here's another very important thing. It shall not return unto me void. And so I have to give you this warning, this disclaimer, that if you will not deliver the word, if you will not stretch forth your hand, being anointed with oil to heal, to be partaker, to help someone's vision come to life. If you will not do the things that God told you to do, he's not going to do those things in your life until you are obedient. But he will raise somebody else up who will be obedient and faithful unto him that has gained the concept and the understanding of putting action behind their faith. It shall not return unto him void. It shall be accomplished. We have to get in a position that it, the things that he has ordained for our lives, according to Jeremiah 1, as well as 29 and 11, the things that he has ordained for us, that we fulfill those things, because it shall not return unto him void. He will raise up someone who will do what he wants done. It says, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it, it shall be done. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The morning, the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the bear shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. We have to get into a place of God. Once again, your faith requires an action. Matthews 17 and 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say, and let's stop right there. First of all, he's dealing with the unbelief. So we know that we must believe. Faith is accompanied by belief. Believing the things that you ask for, believing in the things that he has put within your spirit. But you also must speak to that very thing. Speak 
to those things. It's not just for the tangible things, for the monetary things. It's for illness that has attacked itself to your life. It is for strife. It is for confusion. It is for the things that are not of God, that have come to overshadow you and to come and to block the very things that God has given you. And so what you need to do is you even need to speak to those things. You need to have faith, believing that if I speak to these things, my God, that they be removed from me, I believe. And by speaking to these things, it shall be. And so when I pray that the hands of the enemy are turned back, from me. I believe it. I've spoken to it. I can move forward. He says, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you, but you have to believe. Faith and belief are a combination. then you have to go a step further and you have to speak to it. Faith requires an action. Faith without works is dead. Faith requires action. What are you doing with your faith? What are you doing with your faith? It requires an action on our part. The dream has been given, the word has been spoken, the prophecy has been delivered, the blueprint is there, but what are you doing with your faith? Faith requires actions on our parts. We have to do something to activate it. You activate your faith. Verse 21 says, how be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Those things that you're seeking God for. The vision, the ministry, the new home, the car, the career, deliverance, healing, requires a faith of belief with action, prayer and fasting. There is a combination. And until we get into a place of God, where we have to, uh, we, we have to know what is required of us. It takes a mixture. It takes some things on our parts. But if you're just going to uh, look at it and, and say, oh yeah, God's going to do that. And he showed me he's going to do this. And then you just sit on it. It's not going to move. I came by to tell you today, it's just not, it's not going to move. And so uh, I, I do know that um, when it comes to time to, to, to really teaching and getting into the principles of our faith, it's not a roaring, it's not a, 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 a hyped up blazing message, because what we want to do is we want to take our time to make sure that you know what to do with your faith. You've been carrying around a vision for I don't know how long. You've been carrying around your hopes and your dreams and God placed them within you. He, he has. That's all that you, you haven't gone any further. And you've had the same conversation for years about what you see yourself doing, 
uh, how it's going to be. You've only put it in a conversation. You haven't added anything to it. You haven't spoken to it. You haven't given it life. You've spoken of it, but you did not speak to it. And you did not believe. There's a difference. I can speak of and I can speak to. Catch that in the spirit. I can speak of and I can speak to. I must believe. I must add to my faith. First Peter. Second Peter, the first chapter. We are instructed to add to our faith. Second Peter, first chapter, third verse, it says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Let me read that again. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things, all things, all, all things, all there is no good thing that he will hide from us he has given us all things all things unto what that pertain unto life in christ you have life and you have it more abundantly he's given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him my god let, let, let's go back because I need you to catch this in the spirit. He says, according as his divine power has given us, given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him. So what does that tell me? That tells me through the knowledge of him. Mm, my God. It must be through the knowledge of him. And I obtain all things. This goes back to Matthew's 6th chapter in the 33rd verse. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He said right here, he said, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of God. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask for God. How do we come into the knowledge of, of God? How do we come into the knowledge of Christ? Through the word of God. Spending time with him in the word of God. In prayer. <laughs> what did Matthew 17 say? How be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. I need to get into his presence. How do I get into his presence? Through communicating with him in prayer, through fasting, through spending time in the word of God. These things come, they, 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 they come by fasting and prayer. They, they don't come any other way. I have faith, I believe, I speak, my God, through fasting and in prayer. Then he takes me over in 2 Peter, the first chapter, and he breaks it down a little bit more for us through Paul. He says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us. And besides this, <clears throat> giving all diligence, add to your faith. What does Matthew 17 say? 17, 21. How be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. We are told to speak. We have to believe. Prayer and fasting. Growing in the knowledge of him. Because he's, he's given us those tools. These are tools for faith. He says, add to your faith. He says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. 
I am to add virtue, meaning my strength. I can't give up. I can't be weary. I might want to throw in the towel, but I must remember the things that he said unto me. I must remember the promises given unto me. I must remember what happens when I am obedient according to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. I must have virtue. Strength. Perseverance, my God. He says, and to virtue, knowledge. When we go back to 2 Peter, the first chapter, and we're still in 2 Peter, the first chapter, go back to the third verse. He says, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Through fasting and prayer. Spending time in the word of God, I may gain knowledge. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we then have the, the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit added. We have the Holy Spirit indwelling in us. And so he will lead us and guide us into all truth, revealing unto us the mysteries of the word of God. And so I want to encourage you that even as you pick up your word of God, don't just pick it up and begin to read it. Pick up your word of God. Say a word of prayer and faith over your word of God. That as you are reading, that the word of God may take root in your belly, in your spirit. Ask for knowledge and understanding as you're reading the word of God. Read the word of God. Sit back and to meditate on it day and night. Meditate on the word of God. As you begin to meditate on the word of God, he's going to reveal unto you the mysteries of his word. Once again, an action on our part. There is an action on our part. Action. Your faith requires action. Praise God. It says, and to knowledge, temperance. Temperance. I can't get angry in this thing. I have temperance. He says, and to temperance, patience. Where's your patience? Where's your patience as you're waiting on the things of God? Patience. He told us, my God, in Isaiah 55. And so if you have lost your patience, <clears throat> I want you to go back to Isaiah 55 and 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Even go back to the eighth. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. And so patience, it's not going to come in your time, but in his time. As you stay in that 55th chapter of Isaiah, he, he's telling us he, he, it's, it's nothing hidden. It's nothing hidden. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. But it shall accomplish that which I sent it out to do. It shall do what I send it out to do. Just as he commands the rains to fall and the snow to fall, he commands the sun to rise and to settle. He commands that and it shall be. He calls it forth and it shall be. It shall not return unto him void. His word shall accomplish that which he sends it out to do. It shall. And so as you are adding to your faith and you're adding patience, I, I want you to remember that. It's not in your timing. It's in his timing. Not ours, but his. He says into patience, godliness. Keep your eyes focused on him. Keep your, your mind on the things of Christ. It shall accomplish that which he sent it out to do in his time. Remain in godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity, which is love. Because listen, you can have faith, you can do all these things, but if you have not love, 
it amounts to nothing. It means absolutely nothing. It says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you so very much for joining us today here on The Balance of Life. We will continue in this word. Your faith requires action. We absolutely love you and adore you. And once again, uh, if you'd like to join us, if you are in the Palmetto area, I'd like to give the information again for Genuine Hope Ministries. Please, please, please uh, come out and join us. Uh, 65 1 17th Street West. Unit J, Palmetto, Florida, 34221, Genuine Hope Ministries, where we will be there ministering the Word of God on this Sunday, 9 o'clock a.m., July 28th. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Have a blessed, blessed afternoon.